We're going to start this puppy up. Clear, drop. Welcome back to building the Affordaplane. In this part, we're going to talk about how we are painting our Affordaplane. The type of paint we're using, the method of applying it, and how much it weighs. Why? Because we're trying to make this a Part 103 ultralight, so weight is everything. So it turns out we are going to use exterior house latex paint. Now we did get the best so this is made to protect against the elements heavy duty and this is also semi-gloss you'll see it applied in a moment but I'll tell you right now we're not going to spray it we're going to roll it and you might say well how good is that gonna look well that's what you're gonna find out you be the judge and then finally we're going to weigh our piece before and after we paint it so that we can see exactly how much of the paint weight stays with the piece. And that way, with that number, we can calculate what the painting of the entire plane is going to add to the plane because we know how many square feet roughly and we'll find out the weight of the paint. So without any further ado, Let's take a look at our little experiment. So now we're going to weigh our vertical stabilizer before we paint it and see what it gives. Let me balance it on here. So we got two and we'll call it nine ounces going to do something a little different this time. This is the vertical stabilizer. We're going to paint it with latex with a color this time. Same brand of base paint as we did before for the rudder. Uh, this time I'm not going to put on EcoBond as the first covering. Instead I'm going to use the latex paint itself to see if that has any difference in adhesion or coverage. So two things we're changing. One, we're not going to use the fill of EcoBond. We're going to use latex paint directly on here. And we're changing the color from white to a, well, you'll get to see shortly. But same thing, I'm thinning the coats with uh, water as I go and going to keep covering them until I get a decent coverage. There's our color. First coat. And we'll be back when we're done. I'll have to say that covered with the first coat uh, better than I expected. We will continue. Got to wait and dry. So this is our third coat. And we're going to do something a little different here. After we roll it on, we're going to do what is called uh, tipping. Apparently that's what they call it for those in the business. I'm not in the business, so I'm just going on what I heard. And I'll show you what that entails here. And that's basically just lightly knocking the tiny bubbles off with the foam brush. help the paint flow a little bit. That's the idea. Now I may have it too thick for it to flow properly, but we will continue doing this and uh, we'll see what happens. Life is an experiment. So here's my tipping. I think I was supposed to have this a little bit uh, lighter consistency. I should have uh, thinned it out with water more, but we'll, we'll see what happens. 
Well, definitely three coats was enough. And it looks very shiny and nice, but of course it's going to dry and it's latex. But it'll be interesting to compare when it's all dry, because I think that's it. Three coats did it. Here it is after it has dried. Now, I don't know if you can see any of the shine, but there's definitely a gloss to it. And the surface is definitely nicer. Now I assume that's either to the tipping technique or that uh, we went directly onto the fabric itself instead of the uh, EcoBond. Don't know, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, other side, but very happy. This was just with three coats, three coats. So here is the way in after our painting. And we have two pounds, let's call it 11 ounces. No. Yeah, let's call it two pounds, 11 ounces. So, finishing the vertical stabilizer with our green paint, green latex exterior. Now, the two ounces of paint that we put on, I divide by nine square feet, which was the area of both sides, and that comes out to 0.22222, etc., ounces per square foot. So that's 0.22 ounces per square foot, multiplying that times 360, which is just a rough guess of the total square area, we come out to five pounds. So we actually saved even more weight. But the nice thing is, my point or experiment was, this was putting three coats of the latex paint directly over the fabric with nothing on underneath it. And I don't know if it was due to the coverage or to the tipping procedure I did, but this sure looks really nice and shiny. It's dry now. And I'm going to continue in this vein and uh, uh, finish off painting everything this way. Who knows, but it certainly is light and it certainly looks real nice. And uh, we'll just keep going. People ask how to select the color of your paint for your project. Well, I found an easy way. In the paint department of your favorite hardware store, they got a device, and all you got to do is grab a piece of your shirt, and you stick it in that device, and it somehow reads the color and shoots off the information they need to mix you up some really nice looking paint. That's how I do it. And here is the wing all finished. Now this is two coats. Two coats of latex exterior house paint. It has a nice shine to it. And this was applied with a foam roller brush. And then I used a foam straight brush to tip it. In other words, drag it across after rolling to give it a slightly nicer finish. Tipping, as they call it, I guess. But with just two coats, it should be nice and light. And you get close up, you can see what the grain looks like. Not too bad. You compare this to the effort and work of spraying with all the equipment and all of the stuff that goes with spraying, I've done it, so I know what I'm talking about when it comes to effort and expense in comparing the two processes. Sure, spraying is the best way to go if you have no budget in time or money or mess and cleanup. This was a fraction of the time, money, effort, hassle, and still gives 
not bad. Big difference too is cost, right? This is from the hardware store, exterior, semi-gloss, latex paint. Now this picture is exactly the same wing, but under fluorescent light. Just kind of interesting how the color changes. Also, I should note that I did not add any additional UV protection underneath the paint. This paint went directly onto the fabric. So if you intend to store your plane outside, you might want to think about adding some of the standard UV protection coating on prior to painting. Well, and there you have it. Now you know a little bit more about what we're doing when it comes to painting. So in the meantime, you got it back to building.